Good afternoon and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show with me, Ralph Friedrichs. Today's topic is going to be common reasons why those who need treatment don't get it, whether it's on their own that they refuse to get it or because of some circumstance in life. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I am an addiction recovery coach and the host of this show, Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, let me share this about substance abuse. And let me be crystal clear, I'd like to leave an everlasting impact upon you, my audience. Imagine you're being buried alive. Let's say you know you're in the coffin, yet uh, you know you're not dead. You don't know how to open the coffin and you push the enormous weight that's upon the lid trying to move it so maybe, just maybe, somebody will notice and start digging down to help you. But you also think I'm ba banging even harder because nobody is digging down. Yet nobody is coming. Nobody hears you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and substance abuse. You know you need help. You know you can't get it completely on your own. Yet you don't know how to get help. In reality, there are people who can help you. Standing nearby your grave. Yet you don't know that. You think you're going to die in that coffin. Usually, though, people don't think of death when they're habitually using drugs. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be good at repressing death. I often ask you, my audience, did you ever think about, did it ever cross your mind on all that alcohol, all those drugs that you use, that maybe one day you just might overdose? With this, I leave you with one other thought. Don't be that poor person in the coffin banging for someone to hear to get the help. Make the move. Do something right now and call me at 844-405-HELP and let me help take your life back before your life is gone. Remember that a sober today promises a better tomorrow. Let me give a shout out to, uh, to Larry Geis from the Geis Academy. 516-485-2741, 516-485-2741. Larry Geist is an addiction recovery coach. He is the bridge between addiction and recovery. Utilize him. He has over 30 years experience helping people like you, like me, that have addictions, that are trying to live a sober life, that are in recovery, or he can also help you if you have uh, low self-esteem issues or even any other issues in life. Give him a call at 516-485-2741. You can also Google him at www.odysseyconsultant.org. Let Larry Geis help you take your life back. GlobalEyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving you money. They are focused on making you see better. I want you as my audience to be able to see my show better. What better way than to have a selection of over 1,200 frames to choose from, whether they're plastic or metal, half or full, or even no frames. Folks, they're in combination of men, ladies, and kids. You need lenses like progressives, they have them, line bifocals, they have them. They have every type of lens you can imagine, any type of coat, coating you might need. They're like your lens crafters, your uh, pearl vision, your sterling optical, and your cones, all combined right in your monitor. All you need to do is go online at www.globaleyeglasses.com and let them focus on saving you money. Common reasons why those in need treatment don't get it. When you see someone on the street passed out clutching a bottle in a paper bag, you wonder, why don't they just get help? Ditto the reaction to her co-worker who keeps embarrassing himself or herself at all the office parties. The constant drunk at the bars, the relative who ruins every family gathering, or the loved one on one of their second or third DUIs. In all these scenarios, what are the reasons why people don't get treatment who need treatment? Remember, substance abuse includes illicit drugs and alcohol. Need a treatment made no effort is one reason. According to data from 2005 to 2013, there were five common reasons why people who felt they needed treatment for substance abuse but never made any effort to get it. Number one, they weren't ready to stop using and that was 38.8%. Number two, no health coverage could not afford the course at 32.1%. Number three, 
positive, uh, excuse me, po possibly negative effect on the job. That one came in at 12.3%. And number four, concern that receiving treatment might cause neighbors, the community, to have a negative opinion upon them at 11.8%. What about needed treatment but made no effort, or excuse me, made an effort, I should say, individual who felt they needed treatment for substance abuse and did, and I repeat, did make an effort to get it, offered the following eight reasons, combined data from 2005-2013, why they didn't receive the treatment. Number one is no health coverage, could not afford the cost, and this one was at 27.4%. Number two, they were not ready to stop using at 29.3%. Number three, able to handle a problem without treatment, so they might think at 13%. Number four, no transportation, inconvenient. How can getting better be inconvenient? Eight, uh, 10.5%. No, number five, no program having type of treatment, 8.3%. Uh, number six, did not know where to go for the treatment at 8.1%. Number seven, might cause neighbors, community have a negative opinion upon themselves at 7.7 .7, and uh, might have negative effect on the job at 7.4%. Reasons people did not receive mental services. In 2013, according to the data, there were 10.6 million adults age 18 or older, 4.7% of our population, who reported an unmet need for mental health care. This figure includes 5.1 million who did not receive any mental health care during the past year. Those who did not receive treatment identified the 10 following barriers in their way. Could not afford the cost. That was at a staggering 42.7%. Could handle problems without treatment at any time, 28.6%. Did not know where to go for treatment, 19.8%. Did not have time, 13.9%. Fear of being committed, have to take medicine at 9.6%. Concerned about confidentiality laws, 8.5%. Health insurance did not cover enough treatment, so why even bother starting at 8.0%? Might cause neighbors and community to have negative opinion at 17, excuse me, at 7.7%. And health insurance did not cover any of the treatment. What about those who felt they need, didn't need treatment? What do you know, wh uh, what, what do we know about 95.2% of persons needing treatment for substance abuse but didn't get it because they didn't see a need? The wall of denial. What can be uh, deduced about their reasoning beyond saying that they didn't feel they needed it? These could include any, some, or all of the following 10 reasons. Number one, folks, listen, number one is denial. The most common and initial reaction is the addict refuses to accept that he or she has a problem with alcohols and or drugs. Number two, control. Male addicts, in particular, may find it difficult to admit that there is a need for treatment due to the issues of control. They need to feel in control of their own destiny and often are... Uh, feel that they're not going to be controlled into any sort of treatment. Number three, fear. It takes a lot of determination, motivation, and courage to enter treatment. Many addicts are deterred by fear. Number four, cut off from supplies. They fear many addicts won't enter treatment because they won't have access to their drugs and alcohol. What is the purpose of going into treatment in the first place then? Number six, can't give up the high. For many addicts, the biggest reason they don't go for treatment is that they cannot give up feeling high. They're so wrapped up in how good they feel, so addicted in the high that they can't envision living without it. Number eight, uh, treatment won't help. Some addicts feel that they're beyond help. No treatment po can possibly make a difference in their lives after years of being addicted to drugs and no alcohol, so why even bother? Number nine, Nobody cares after burning their bridges behind them, alienating family and friends. During years of addiction, some addicts feel that there is no one left that cares whether they live or die. Since they have no one to close, uh, no one close, no one to support their efforts to get better, why even bother? Number 10, 
Stigma. Buried within a person's denial of need for treatment may be the stigma attached going into rehab. Whether the person is a celebrity or a common laborer, society still treats addicts with a certain amount of contempt. Hope the problem will resolve itself, what a lot of people think. Some addicts who secretly know different hope that the problem they currently have or have had for some time with drugs and alcohol will simply resolve itself away. This form of self-delusion is akin to a denial, but the, uh, the accompanying blow to self-esteem when such a turnaround fails to occur plunges the addict into a deeper despair. Sometimes they even want to die. After years of abuse of alcohol and or drugs, having lost all hope in life with no one to care, not believing treatment would be effective or even seeing no reason to turn their lives around, some addicts continue their addiction in a deliberate attempt to end their lives. That's a shame. Finding treatment for substance abuse. Individuals can call the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration, otherwise known as SAMHSA, which is S-A-M-H-S-A -S National Hotline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-HELP, which is 4357, available in English or in Spanish when you call. This is a toll-free national re referral service for locating alcohol and drug abuse treatment programs. You can also call me at 844-405-HELP and I can also help you to the proper areas. What else can you do? Learn as much as you can about the drug and alcohol abuse and addiction and all the mental issues that go with the addictions. Be ready and supportive for the addict when he or she admits that their addiction and is willing to seek treatment. When they break that wall of denial you may even want to arrange for an intervention to confront the addict and overcome his or her objections to seeking treatment. In the end, however, the addict must commit in seeking help and remain in the program for it to have any beneficial effect. No one but the addict can do this. Threats, promises, or any type of strong arming will only go so far. Each addict has his or own tipping point as to when and how they will seek treatment. The best thing that anyone can do is care for the addict and, and be ready when they are ready to make the changes. They meet needed treatment but they made no effort because they weren't ready to stop using, no health insurance, possible negative effect on their job, not knowing where to go for treatment and concern reason t concern that receiving treatment might cause neighbors in the community to judge them. Needed treatment, but made an effort. But nothing happened because they had no health coverage, not ready to stop using, able to handle problem without treatment, no pro program having the type of treatment that they are looking for, did not feel the need for treatment this particular moment, did not know where to go for the treatment, might cause neighbors, community to have negative opinion, and might have a negative effect on the job. Reasons people did receive mental did not receive mental service uh, help was could not afford the cost, could not ha could handle problem without the treatment, did not know where to go for the treatment, did not have time for the treatment, fear of being committed, have to take medicine, they didn't want to deal with that, concerned about confidentiality. Health insurance did not cover enough of the treatment. They don't have the difference between what was covered and what isn't. Treatment would not help, they felt, and health insurance did not cover any of the treatment. What about those who felt they didn't need treatment at all? The reason that they didn't need, uh, they didn't feel that they needed treatment is because they don't want to be cut off from the supply. They can't give up the high. Treatment won't help them anyway, they say. Nobody cares whether they get treated or just sit in a corner drunk. Stigma buried with a person's denials and need for treatment may be a stigma attached to going into rehab. Hope for the problem to resolve by itself. They don't care if they just die, they'll drink and smoke themselves to death. If you're looking for treatment, call 1-800-622-HELP. 
Help, that's the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration, SAM, HSA. You can also get a hold of me, 844-405-HELP. I can help you. One of my websites has every state with uh, places that you can go to. What else can you do, you might ask? Learn as much as you can about drug and alcohol abuse and addiction and all the issues that come with it. Be ready and support it for the addict when he or she admits their addiction and is willing to seek treatment. You may even want to arrange for an intervention to confront the addict and overcome his or her objections in tr seeking treatment. In the end, however, the addict must commit to seeking help and remain in the program for it to have any beneficial effect. No one but the addict can do this. You don't need to threaten. You don't need to uh, make promises. You don't need to strong arm because at the end of the day, each addict has his or own way and their own tipping point of when help is necessary. Folks, all I really want to say is that if you just remember, a sober today promises a better tomorrow. Think about it. A sober today, 24 hours today, promises a better tomorrow. Go to bed sober, wake up sober, do that over and over again, and I promise you, things will become better in life. Things like your health, the color of your skin, your financials, your relationships, your relationship with your higher power, your job security. All this comes with sobriety. All this comes in recovery. But it's up to you to make the move. It's up to you to make the change. It's up to you to take your life back. And it's up to you to call me at 844-405-HELP or you can text me at 631-599-0218. Let me be your crutch. Lean on people like Larry Geis at 516-485-2741 or myself let us be the bridge between addiction and recovery. And remember, always remember, that all changes in life that I constantly speak of all happen in very small baby steps. Remember, in order to go from one side of the road to the other, you need to walk slowly, you need to look left and right, you need to proceed cautiously, and you need to make smaller steps. Nobody leaps from addiction to recovery. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of education, it takes 24 hours at a time, and it takes you to stop denying you have a problem, folks. I hope to God, no matter where you are watching me, that you have the best day of your life. But I hope and I pray that no matter where you're watching me, that you all have a sober rest of your life. And call me at 844-405-HELP and let me help you take your life back.